save login, register or subscribe to save articles for later. Normal text size larger text size very large text size. All stories, even true ones, are constructed some events highlighted, some ignored. Reality television, despite its name, is one of the more constructed forms of entertainment. Characters and storylines created by manipulative editing, drama manufactured where it may not have existed. Byron Bay's, a new Netflix reality docu-soap, is out and I've been thinking about how it really feels to live in the northern rivers. Q Endless Rain I have lived here, in the hinterland, all of my life. Seasonal flooding is normal. The creeks rise, covering low causeways, trapping some of us in. After the rain stops, the creeks fall, and those trapped in can get out again. As a child, this flooding was always exciting. My family didn't get flooded in, but if the creeks surrounding us rose to a particular height, we were allowed a day off school. My father would take us for a drive to the shops. On the way, we would cross three bridges, the dark orange water rushing below. At the shops, he would buy us cool mints, the only time we were ever allowed sweets. For years, I associated flooding with the intense burst of a cool mint in my mouth, oh the joy. Five years ago, there was rain like we had never seen before. My family lost a cabin on our property to the raging torrents, its stumps sucked from the earth, the whole cabin lifted and smashed up downstream. The road in front of our closest bridge washed away completely, and we were trapped in for days with no power, no running water, no landlines, no reception. Lismore and Merwalumba were decimated. They told us it was a one in 100 year flood. Jesse Cole's neighbors carrying bikes over a destroyed road so they can get to the nearest town during the latest crisis. Two and a half years later, we were in a drought so severe our rainforests burned. We evacuated due to the threat of fire, a threat we had never experienced before. My house didn't burn, but others did. Suddenly, we found ourselves caught in this new rapid cycling extreme weather, pinging from one disaster to the next. During the pandemic, a huge wave of urban migrants hit us, a sea of tree change of epic proportions. Real estate prices rose wildly, renting a house became near impossible. Single mothers with small children shifted quietly into friends' garages. People who had previously had homes started sleeping in their cars. It was not uncommon to walk into a public toilet and stumble upon an embarrassed middle-aged woman giving herself a quick sponge bath by the sink. This is the story of gentrification the world over, but in the northern rivers we were also post-catastrophic flood and catastrophic fire. A traumatized community, trying not to buckle under the weight of the next influx.